In this module, we'll talk about how data is represented for deep learning or how we can represent data for deep learning and also how various tensor operations are performed within the deep learning libraries that we use or the tensor operations that we can perform um, to the data that we um, have for deep learning. Tensors are multidimensional NumPy arrays. And um, a tensor is a container for data, almost always a numerical data. So when we say tensor, we usually talk about, and uh, this is for uh, numerical data, numerical data. And uh, it is a container for numbers and not actually um, the numbers. And all current machine learning systems use sensors as their, use tensors as their basic data structure. Uh, for example, matrices are 2D tensors. Tensors, in a way, are a generalization of matrices to an arbitrary number of dimensions. And we will talk more about this. The difference between, say, what exactly a container is versus an actual array is. So say, for example, in C++, if I do int a, let's say, 20 by 20, then what this gives is um, it gives me uh, uh, it, it creates a memory where a is a two-dimensional array say for example 20 by 20 and these spaces are reserved to keep values of say um, type integer now a tensor on the other hand is it's, it's still a numpy um, array but it's more like a container like a box, a flexible box, which we can use to store 2D arrays or 3D arrays and so on. So in a way, a matrix, we can say a matrix is a 2D array, but a tensor is more of a generic um, form of matrix. So when the number of dimensions in the matrix are in the tensor are two, then that becomes a matrix. When the number of dimensions is just one, that may become a list, and so on. Now let's look at the definition of a matrix. If you look up matrix in Wikipedia, uh, a matrix is a rectangular array of numbers or symbols or, or even expressions. So basically a matrix is a grid of n by m, say three by three numbers, surrounded by brackets. Usually we put these brackets around matrices to represent them. Um, we can, we know from algebra that we can add and subtract matrices of the same size, multiply ma one matrix with another matrix as long as the sizes are compatible. That is, uh, if the first matrix is of size n by m, the second has to be m by p such that the result becomes n cross p. Uh, we can also multiply an entire matrix by a constant. We know this. And we also know that a vector is a matrix with just one row or one column. Now going from a matrix to a tensor is in a way Thinking of generalization, generalization. So a tensor is a generalized matrix, while a matrix only has um, height and width, that is um, length, maybe um, height times length, only two dimensions. Tensor could be of any number of dimensions. It could be a one-dimensional matrix, that is a vector, um, is actually such a tensor. It could be a three-dimensional matrix, something like a cube of numbers, or even a zero-dimensional matrix, like a single number, or a higher-dimensional structure that is harder to visualize because uh, we can visualize 2D, we can even visualize 3D, um, 3D objects, but we can't visualize uh, something that's more than three-dimensional. For example, 4D is difficult to visualize, right? So a tensor is, you can say, generalization of matrix. A matrix is fixed to 
two dimensions n by m whereas tensor could have any number of dimensions so that's the difference between a matrix and a tensor the key point here is to look at the difference between them now going ahead um, the first thing that we discussed that is a tensor is a generalization of matrix that is generalization of matrix but well, just to give an idea of where tensors stand in comparison to matrix now there is even further more about tensors uh, <clears throat> that is very important compared to matrices Tensors are not just that they are generalization of matrices. In a way, tensor is more like a mathematical entity that lives in a structure and interacts with other mathematical entities. So in a way, it's like an object. It's like an object. If we transform the entities in the structure in a regular way, then the tensor must obey a related transformation rule. Imagine that we have a lot of tensors sitting one after the other. You can think of this as um, variables. Let's say I make int x equals, let's say, 0. And then I do int y equals x plus 2. And then let's say I do int z equals y minus 7. So in this way, you can imagine that this information, 0, flows through from x to y and from y to z all the way down maybe to a different variable int p right so this information flow let's say we visualize using um, various uh, sizes of pipes let's say this is my first variable which i can call my first tensor t1 and then this is my second tensor t2 third tensor t3 T4, T5, and T6. Now, what's very special about tensors is that uh, they are like real-world objects that handshake with previous object and the object after them. Now, if these were regular two-dimensional matrices, if this is, say, for example, 4 by 4 matrix and we were adding these matrices first with the second then this also has to be 4 by 4 and this also has to be 4 by 4 and so on so that what comes out of this tensor can correctly go into the second tensor t2 but now tensors are objects and and they in a way um, live in the structure what this means is if this first tensor is of size 4 by 4 and the, I have a second tensor currently of size 4 by 4 as well. And uh, so they are all connected. Information comes into this tensor first. And then say finally flows out of the final tensor, right? If somehow the size of this tensor, the first tensor T1, was to change such that this now became 8 by 8, then the tensor that follows this T2 will also automatically update to, sorry, this is 8 by 8, to update to 8 by 8. So this is automatic update. Now, this is interesting because if these were all matrices and I was defining them, then I will manually change the dimensions from 4 by 4 to 8 by 8 here and from 4 by 4 to 8 by 8 here and do the same thing for all the tensors but because tensors live in a structure that is they live in a structure if the first tensor is modified to 8 by 8 the second tensor automatically adopts it adopts to the same dimensions um, same uh, size as the first tensor and this follows all the way from the input all the way to the output so this is very interesting feature of tensors compared to matrices because now these are dynamic um, if we change our input dimensions um, we can assume that the following tensors automatically adapt to my input dimensions now, this dynamical property is the key 
it is the main thing that distinguishes a tensor from a mere matrix and um, you can see that um, it's a team player whose numerical values shift around along with those of its teammates when a transformation is introduced that affects all of them so as i said before if my original input was two by two then all of these tensors following will adapt themselves to the size two by two two by two and so on but as soon as i change my input from two by two to let's say four by four then all of the subsequent matrices also automatically adapt to four by four four by four and so on now let's look at a tensor in tensorflow a tensorflow object tf dot tensor has the following properties number of access which is also known as the rank of the tensor data type either float 32 int 32 sometimes even a string and the last is uh, the shape so first property second property and third property the number of axes that is the rank is simply how many dimensions does the tensor have if this um, if the tensor is 2d then the rank will be equal to 2 if the tensor is like a cube if it has a cube of numbers then rank equals 3 um, if it only has a list of numbers then rank equals 1 and if it is a single value then rank is equals to zero and the shape is actually the length and um, width or the actual size um, of the uh, of the tensor for example for this matrix the shape will be shape will be equals to three The shape will be equals to 3 cross 3 because I have three rows and three columns so shape is the actual size actual size of the tensor now clearly we can actually infer the number of axes from the shape itself looking at the shape say if my shape is 3 by 4 then the number of axes is 2 if the shape is 4 5 6 7 then this is a tensor which has dimensions four dimensions right so rank equals 4 um, and its shape is 4 5 6 7 so it's a 4 by 5 by 6 by 7 um, tensor or a matrix so as I said before, the rank of TF dot tensor object is the number of dimensions. Um, synonyms for rank are order or even degree or n dimension, four dimension, five dimension, etc. The shape of a tensor is the number of elements in each dimension. So if the shape is let's say four by five, then uh, we know that the matrix has four elements in the row and five elements in the column, having total 20 elements. Um, tensors have a data type it is not possible for a tensor with um, more than one data type in other words unlike Python in Python what happens is if you have a list the first item can be integer second can be string and third can be float and the fifth can be dictionary right in a Python list so Python 3 list your list does not necessarily have to be of the same data type but in case of tensors all of these must be same data type same data type now here's a summary of um, some examples of tensors if a tensor has rank 0 then its shape will be nothing it's also known as 0d tensor an example is a scalar value if a tensor has rank 1 its shape will be in big brackets some value d naught 
uh, it's a one-dimensional tensor. An example is 1D tensor with, say, for example, shape 5. Another example is a tensor with rank 2. It has, um, it will be x by y, here d0 by d1. It has uh, two dimensions. And an example is 2D tensor with um, shape 3 by 4. Another example, a tensor with rank 3, its shape will be something like d0, d1, d2, and um, it has three dimensions. A tensor with shape, say for example, 1 by 4 by 3, 1, 4, 3. So n-dimensional tensor uh, will have rank n, and its shape will be d1, d0, d1, all the way to dn minus 1. And uh, it's n-dimensional. And uh, an example will be a tensor with shape d0, d1, da, 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 all the way to d minus 1. Usually, we also call a tensor with rank 0 a scalar, um, which only has the magnitude. A tensor with rank 1, a vector. A tensor with rank 2, a matrix. A tensor with rank 3, a 3D tensor or 3 tensor. and um, uh, tensor with rank n, n tensor. You may be curious what data types tensor flow supports or a tensor supports. Here is a list of the tensor flow data types supported by a tensor. Um, float 16, also known as half precision floating point, the standard float 32, which is the most common one. Float 64, uh, B float um, 16 and so on, int 8, uint, um, even a string, boolean, and so on. So depending upon need, uh, we will pick the data type that we want. For the entire course and for almost everything that you do, by default, um, you will use float 32, which uh, even if you don't specify, I think TensorFlow automatically selects this. If you are doing a GPU training, and would like to save resources, save resources, then uh, it is a good idea to try using float 16, but it is tricky. Um, you may have a lot of issues in directly running a float 16 version of your code. So um, uh, you can simply understand that there are various possible data types that you can use to create your tensors uh, depending on your need. But uh, most commonly, by default, you can stick to the float 32. One of the simplest tensors is a 0D tensor or um, scalars. A tensor that contains only one number is called a scalar or um, a scalar tensor or even zero dimensional tensor or simply 0D tensor. In NumPy, a float32 or float64 number is a scalar tensor or scalar array. For a 0D tensor or any other tensor, you can display the number of axes of a NumPy tensor via the ndim attribute. So a scalar tensor has zero axis, that's why its ndim will be equals to zero. Now, whether it is NumPy or it is a TensorFlow object, the idea of tensors still holds. The number of axis of a tensor is also called its rank, as we saw before. So if I import NumPy and then create an array, np.array12, that means there's a single value 12 stored into this NumPy array x. And then if I simply do x, it prints array with a content 12. And if I do x.ndim, it gives me zero because this is a zero dimensional array. Now, from 1D NumPy array, or 1D tensors, sorry, from 0D tensors, we now move to 1D tensors. And one-dimensional tensors are also called vectors. And basically, it is an array of numbers, or um, 
just a 1D tensor. And a 1D tensor is said to have exactly one axis. So if I do np.array and provide a list of numbers, then um, I get this um, numpy array x, and if I print it, I get all the values. And if I print x.endim, I get one because it's one dimensional. Similarly, in the next level, we have 2D tensors, also known as matrices. And um, an array of vectors is a matrix. So we have a vector here, let's say, containing all these different values. Um, we have another vector, and then we have another vector. So an array of vectors is a matrix. In other words, I can have Let's say this is my first row, second row, third row, fourth row, and fifth row. So I basically have this as my vector, another vector, another vector, vector, vector. So this array of vectors is a matrix, basically. It's a 2D tensor. A 2D tensor has two axes, and um, those two axes are often referred to as rows and columns. We can visually interpret a matrix as a rectangular grid of numbers, just the way we see here. For example, I can create a two-dimensional NumPy array by specifying first row, second row, and third row. So this is a three by one, two, three, four, five. Three by five NumPy matrix. And if I print x dot endim, then it gives me two because this is a, as I said, three by five matrix. Now this is where tensors or numpy arrays start becoming useful to load data sets. For example, the Pima Indian diabetes data set, it is a tabular data with rows and columns. Here's the Pima Indian diabetes data set. The first column is how many times the person is pregnant. Second column is glucose level. Third column is blood pressure, skin thickness, insulin, BMI, diabetes pedigree function is in final outcome, whether that person had diabetes or no diabetes. So this is my first row, second row. This is actually my first row, but this is all headers. And third row and so on. So such a tabular data, tabular data can be loaded if I ignore my headers and if I ignore my row numbers, what remains is all numbers. You can see that this is a two-dimensional array. So I can directly load this into my two-dimensional tensor X. Now, 3D tensors and uh, even higher dimensional tensors. If we pack two-dimensional metrics in a new array, we obtain a 3D tensor. One good example of this is the Pima Indian dataset over a period of time. Also, this is similar to a video or an input um, image. Um, we will talk more about um, the time series data, for example, Pima Indian data set over time. But here, let's look at an example. So I have a np.array, these three brackets tell me that this is a, going to be a three-dimensional tensor. Um, here's my first row of the first column of the first um, third dimension. And um, this is my first dimension, second dimension is starting, and here's my last dimension. So this is like a cube of numbers. And when I print it, I get, uh, when I print the endim, I get three. Now, three-dimensional NumPy arrays, you can imagine, are, uh, we can imagine them in our, in our mind. But when it gets to four-dimensional and five-dimensional tensors, it becomes really difficult to imagine. Uh, 
So can you think of some examples of four-dimensional and five-dimensional tensor data? Now going back to the Pima Indian data set, uh, well, before we talk about that, let's talk about how images can be 3D tensors. You know that a picture of someone actually if the picture is black and white black and white then it is simply a 2d matrix but if a picture is colorful then it actually consists each pixel actually consists of red green and blue intensities to get a color so essentially a 2d image is actually three channels my red values, my green values, and my blue values. So this is an example of a 3D tensor because each color here, red, is a 2D tensor, another 2D tensor, and blue is another 2D tensor. All put together make it a 3D tensor.